Welcome aboard. Today we're over central Iraq, overhead the Al Ambar province and the Euphrates River Valley on hour four of a seven hour combat sortie that originated from the Northern Arabian Gulf aboard the United States ship Theodore Roosevelt. This is the third scheduled tanking evolution of the sortie and we'll have one more to go before we can head back to the Arabian Gulf for a night recovery overhead the ship. In this jam, I'll talk you through contact with the tanker. We'll discuss tanking in turn considerations. And lastly, I'll tell you the story about this Luftwaffe tanker that you see off the nose. Buckle up, it's gonna be fun. All right, so the tanker pilot has cleared us to pre-contact, which is about five feet behind the drogue of the aircraft, aligned vertically and horizontally with the drogue. Unexpectedly, the tanker pilot has gone into a left-hand turn that was uncalled. And so now I'm just flying form off the tanker, trying to trim it out and get in a good spot where I can line my probe up with the drogue. The sun's becoming a little bit of a factor and it's getting difficult for me to see the drogue. I'm trying to creep it forward, creep it forward, creep it forward, and I missed. So I'm gonna pull power back up just a little bit. Well, how you doing? Feeling better? Trim it out. Get back to that five feet behind the drogue. The sun's still a factor. I'm gonna push it forward now, try to get about two to three knots of closure, nothing more, a little to the left. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm slowly gonna push it up, referencing the white stripes on the black hose for distance. If you look closely on the pod on the tanker's wingtip, you'll see on the left side are three vertical lights, an amber light, a red light, and a green light. The amber light comes on when the hose is fully extended and when the refueling system is ready for an offload. The light flashes when the hose is pushed in some, but not enough to transfer fuel. The red light indicates that the pod system is not ready to transfer fuel. And should that light flash red, it indicates that, little how you doing, the tanker pilot is commanding an emergency breakaway, expecting me to go to idle boards and immediately detach from the drug. The green light, which is what we have now, and what we're shooting for indicates that fuel is flowing greater than 50 gallons per minute and we're in a good spot. So what you saw was me push the hose up until we get the green light. And then I'll note that distance between the last white stripe and the pot on the aircraft. And I'll maintain that distance throughout the evolution. I'll be careful not to go up or down or left or right to stretch out the hose in any way, which could put a lot of tension on the probe of the aircraft and potentially rip the tip off, which usually results in FOD or foreign object debris going down the right motor and causing catastrophic engine damage to the aircraft, which is bad news over hostile country. So we're in a good spot now, just on top of the clouds. We're taking gas, I'm trimming it out, a little signature move and relaxing. Looking good. In country, the tanker pilots will usually fly what's called a racetrack pattern, where they'll be anchored about a point. They'll usually fly about 50 mile legs with two turns of 180 degrees. We can see the tanker pilot has initiated another uncalled left-hand turn. Let me talk you through how we stay in position. So I'm gonna roll up on a wing. I'm gonna keep the hose nice and straight, and I'm gonna use the tanker's wing as my horizon reference. I'm just gonna hold that good spot do my best to match the tanker's rate of roll and keep it as steady as possible. Any kind of PIO or pilot induced oscillations can cause the jet to move up or down or left or right in a weird way that can make the aircraft very difficult to control. The fix for that is to relax, to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes and release the white knuckle death grip the pilots often have on the stick during a tense tanking evolution. Okay, we're in a good spot. Tanker pilot's got a little bit more to go before we're gonna roll out. You can see the sun angle is kind of low. The sun's at our back now, which is helping me out quite a bit as we're only an hour or so before sunset. You can see that flying just on top of this undercast layer is creating the illusion of ground rush. It makes it feel like we're going really, really fast. Not a huge deal. I'm trying to tune that out and pay attention to the task at hand. Now the pilot's rolling out nice and slow. I'm matching his roll rate. And we're there. Looking good. Just holding the spot. 
The aircraft that you see off the nose is an Airbus A310 MRTT or multi-role tanker transport. It's a military derivative of the Airbus A310 TAC 300 Charlie, which is a dual motor, wide body airliner. The conversion of the A310 to the military version involved the installation of two air to air refueling pods. In this case, you can see one under each wing, signature move, five additional fuel tanks. They can give the aircraft an additional 62,000 pounds of gas. The cockpit also has an FOS or a fuel operator station immediately behind the captain that controls fuel offload, cameras, radios, and exterior lighting. And the aircraft also has reinforced wings that accommodate the extra weight of all that extra gas. In a few moments, you'll notice me look over my left wingtip. There's an Airwing F-18 Echo that just showed up on the tanker's left side looking to get a little bit of gas. It's not uncommon for a tanker like this to give gas to two fighters at the same time, one on each wingtip. That fighter is on a mission of DCA, or defensive counter air in a nearby kill box, and he and his wingman are just taking turns, or what we call yo-yoing to the tanker, to ensure that at least one fighter is on station at all times. Good to see you, brother. All right, let's fast forward a couple minutes to disconnect, and I'll talk you through it. Okay, our offload is complete and we've been cleared for disconnect. So I'm going to slightly retard the throttles and drift aft. Careful not to let the drogue impact the radome as we separate. Probe comes back in. Continue to drift aft. And now we've been cleared to starboard observation. A little right wing dip as we head to the right side of the tanker. Looking good. One last look at the tanker. All right. Well, guys, if you enjoyed the jam today, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Buy me a beer, or a brewski in this case. The details are in the description. Thank you for your continued support for this channel. Welcome to more Ground Jams. Signature